Hey guys, Thomas Joseph here with another kitchen conundrum. People have been saying that they're having trouble with angel food cake. It either comes out too dense, it's wet, or when it's cooling, it falls. Well, today I'm gonna to show you a recipe for success, and that is angel food cake 101. So to start, I have egg whites, which is the leavening in angel food cake. One and three quarter cups of egg whites here. It's a volume measure, but that's about 14 large egg whites. and they're at room temperature because that's how you'll get maximum volume. And to this, I'm going to add one tablespoon of room temperature water. The water just kind of helps to break up the egg whites and start this on medium speed. And once the egg whites get slightly frothy as they are now, add one and a half teaspoons of cream of tartar. Cream of tartar adds strength to the egg foam, so it helps to stabilize half teaspoon of coarse salt, and two teaspoons of vanilla extract. So I'm gonna continue beating this on medium speed until I get soft peaks. Now you wanna make sure that you have on hand three quarters of a cup of super fine sugar. Super fine sugar is also known as caster sugar. The granules are a little bit finer than regular sugar and they dissolve easily in meringues or egg whites just like this. So it's been about a few minutes Beat this mixture until you reach soft peaks. So we're just about there at soft peaks. You can see they're tipping over. They're not holding a stiff shape. And now I'm going to increase the speed to medium high and I'm going to gradually add my sugar a tablespoon at a time. And I'm gonna continue beating this until it reaches stiff peaks, but the meringue isn't dry. So keep an eye on it. So our peaks are nice and stiff. You can see it's standing straight up. They're still glossy. Now transfer to a bigger bowl because we have to fold in a little bit more sugar and our cake flour. I have in front of me one cup of sifted cake flour, meaning that you sift cake flour first, then measure one cup and three quarters of a cup of super fine sugar. I've sifted that together three times. Now you want to make sure that you sift a number of times to get out any lumps and make this flour sugar mixture light. I'm going to take a portion of this and sift it right over my egg whites. You want to do this in additions because it will help in avoiding clumps of flour. Why are we using cake flour? Well, cake flour has a lower protein content than all-purpose flour, which will yield a more tender cake. Our last addition of our flour sugar mixture. Folding is the process of bringing up the batter from the bottom up and over, incorporating all of the ingredients. You're kind of moving in a J. So this looks well mixed, and now I'm going to transfer it into a tube pan. This is a classic pan for angel food cake. It is aluminum. Do not buy those nonstick versions because the cake will not rise nicely. This anodized aluminum has a slight texture to it, which helps that egg white batter hold on and climb up the sides of the pan. So evenly spread your batter into the pan. This tube pan has a removable bottom, and what that does is it makes an easy job of removing the cake when it's baked and cooled. And there are some models that are sold with these feet, and this is great for cooling the cake, and I'll show you how we're going to cool the cake once it's out of the oven. So take an offset spatula and spread the batter out into a nice, even layer. Make sure your oven is preheated to 350 degrees with the rack in the middle of the oven. If you have any batter around the edge of the pan, just use your finger to remove that so you have one nice even layer. And using a paring knife, a long thin blade, draw the knife through the batter. This batter is quite stiff, so when you place it in the pan, sometimes it doesn't work into all of the nooks and crannies of the pan. So this pops any air bubbles and moves the batter into those negative spaces and then right into the oven for about 35 to 40 minutes until it's nice and golden brown on top and slightly springy to the touch. So our angel food cake is completely cooled. Now when it does come out of the oven, you need to invert it. This is actually a little trick here. The cake needs to be cooled upside down so it does not deflate. So these little feet help in that. If you have a tube pan that doesn't have these feet, what you can do is you can take the tube of the pan, the center, and you can invert it over a bottle like this and let it cool just like that. 
This obviously is completely cooled and I'm gonna show you how to remove it from the pan. Take one of these icing spatulas, something with a thin flexible blade and run this along the interior perimeter of the cake. Give pressure to the side of the pan and rotate the pan around, gliding around the outside of the cake. And now, fingers crossed, you should be able to pull the cake right out of the pan, just like this. Take your spatula again and run it along the very bottom of the pan. And for the center section, all you need is a paring knife. Just go around the center tube and you should be able to flip the cake right out of the pan. You can use a pastry brush or you can use your hand to knock away any of the crumbs around the outside. You know what, I can't wait to show you what the inside of this angel food cake looks like. It's perfectly tender. Look at that beautiful cloud-like interior, so light and airy and surprisingly simple to make. So there you go, you have the recipe and now you can add it to your baking repertoire. Hey guys, Thomas Joseph here with another kitchen conundrum. People have been saying that they're having trouble with angel food cake. It either comes out too dense, it's wet, or when it's cooling, it falls. Well, today I'm gonna to show you a recipe for success, and that is angel food cake 101. So to start, I have egg whites, which is the leavening in angel food cake. One and three quarter cups of egg whites here. It's a volume measure, but that's about 14 large egg whites. and they're at room temperature because 